Ladies and gentlemen. So I'm Jared Bevin. Um, I'm a software engineer and I work here actually for a company in Estonia that's called Zero Turnaround, an amazing company. But I'm from Belgium and um, I was invited here today to talk about this instrument that I've been uh, privileged to work on for a couple of years. So the idea that I'd like to share with you is that there is a new age appearing for digital musicians. It's kind of happening in the background and people aren't noticing it, but there are a few uh, technologies that are rising that are going to make digital music become something that it has never been before. So, that's me. So this instrument that I have here is called the Eigenharp. And uh, three years ago, I had uh, the opportunity to work on this. Uh, the company is based in the UK. And I guess it's fine. I'm going to start playing a little bit of music for you so that you can hear one part of my journey, uh, which only just started three years ago. So, before talking about where electronic music is going, so this new age for digital musicians, I think it's a good idea to very briefly summarize the history of electronic music. So, electro electronic music really started in the 60s with analog synthesizers, um, and they were controlled like this. So, we had that metal touch pads where people could be very expressive and the theremin, I guess everyone has ever seen these uh, ghostly sounds that are being made by the theremin. Uh, very appropriate for Halloween, so um, this is the right period for this. And the nice thing about analog synthesis at this time is that actually the whole synthesizer was controlled by voltages, so basically currents running through it. And as you change the behavior of the current in the system with your hands, you actually change the sound that it was being made by your synthesizer. 
which was a very emotional, a very tangible experience because you were actually part of the process that was generating the sound. And so what happened was we created another type of uh, synthesizer that actually started using the piano keyboard which was extremely convenient. The piano keyboard has got keys that are set at specific notes, and we know exactly where we press, and it's easy. You press that white key, is going to be Do, Re, Mi, uh, while if you have to learn the theremin or a touch trip, you have to really uh, go through the same process as, for example, a violin or a cello player, where you have to find the pitch. So this was a great advancement and very convenient for uh, electronic musicians, but they started to shift their attention, not to the whole sound that they're controlled, but they trigger the note and then they started controlling it in the sustain part, in the last part of the notes that they were playing. And then we started with digital synthesizers. And digital synthesizers are awesome. Why? It's because you're not tied to what's possible with just electronic current. You can calculate and create new sounds that are not built from primary building blocks from analog synthesis, but you can really create anything. Now the problem is that they reuse the same interface, so they use the piano keyboard and knobs and faders, but instead of having this connected directly to the sound through current, they started triggering it. So they sent out an impulse with, with a protocol that later became MIDI to say, okay, you've got to play this sound and then afterwards I'm going to modify this sound while I'm playing. So this disconnect started to happen, and over the years we went into genres that were more and more focused towards triggering and controlling instead of really performing and being part of the sound as a musician, just as any traditional instrument um, a player does. So that's a bit of shame, because it's like this whole part of music is not being done anymore in electronic music, digital electronic music. Um, it's more focused towards triggering and operating upon the sound. So one of the things that, so one of these technologies that are now going to make digital musicians enter a new age is that we've all now got access to cheap and amazingly powerful computers. It's amazing what you can do with a computer nowadays. So let me give you a short demo. Thank you. So that was a great piano sound. Now, 
why am I putting these in a section of cheap and amazingly powerful computers? Is because actually, this piano was created by a software called Pianotech, and they use a method that is called physical modeling. So they calculate every small detail of the sound that you hear in real time. It's not sound that has been recorded and played back as you push the note that is, corresponds to the note that you want to play, but it actually calculates all the small finesses of the sound. So if, for example, a note resonates and you've got another string in the, in the virtual string in the piano that would resonate at the same frequency, they start resonating too. And all of a sudden, this becomes an instrument and not just a collection of samples that are being played together. And as you can see on this picture, you can go much further than that. You can actually completely modify your piano, change the way it's built, the way it's tuned, the material is being used for the strings. So actually, craft your own piano instrument. And the amazing thing is that five years ago, it was impossible to calculate two notes simultaneously with a computer using this uh, method. Now I can play an entire piece on my MacBook Pro that just sits there and that does a whole bunch of other stuff at the same time also. So the capabilities have become amazing. But more importantly, these powerful computers have given rise to a new breed of controllers. This is one of them. This is the Eigenharp. It's my personal favorite. Um, and we're not thinking about just the piano keyboards anymore and knobs and faders. But what I have here is a sensor technology that measures, in, in the case of the Eigenharp, in three dimensions all the movements that I make on the keys. It measure, measures what I touch here on the sides, it measures what I breathe, um, and it sends all that straight to the computer. It's not calculating anything inside the instrument. It's sending it over one wire straight to the computer, and the computer can use all that information, all that data, which is humongous. It is, it is almost like a symphony of data, it's like hundreds of things coming in at the same time. And it can use that to calculate sound in a more appropriate way. It is extremely reactive, and it can really um, model interactions that are not possible by just triggering knobs and pressing on buttons. So, I'm just mentioning a few other uh, controllers, just for the sake of it. There is another controller that I personally like a lot. It's called the Leap Motion Controller, which actually measures the position of both your hands in, in the air. Um, and it's being used now to create music with also. They've got the same approach. They send the data in bulk to the computer, and then you can do with it whatever you like. Here's another one. It's made by a good friend of mine, Roger Lin, who is famous for the MPC, which has kind of changed hip-hop music, well, it actually created hip-hop music. Um, and Roger Lin is working on another instrument, it's called the Linstrument, where, similar to the Eigenharp, where you've got keys that you can press in three dimensions, he's got uh, flat surfaces that you can press in three dimensions and move left and right. So this is still a prototype, but Roger was so kind of me, so kind to allow me to show you these renderings. Um, so, to show you what I mean with doing uh, what is appropriate with all the data that is sent to the computer, I'm going to give you a few demos here, very, very short ones. So, for example, uh, as I said, I've got a touch strip here at the, at the bottom, which is very sensitive, and I'm going to use this to simulate a virtual bow, as if I would be bowing a stringed instrument. And at the same time, I've got my frets here, my notes. You see, I'm a very bad cello player, but you can get the, the idea, right? This is something that you can only do when you get all that data that is then used by the computer and it knows that, okay, I'm rubbing over this strip here, and I want to use this together with the string that is being modeled. So that's one example. There's another example here. 
So I said that these keys are very sensitive. They move in three dim di dimensions, and they can measure everything that I do with them in, uh, in extreme detail. Um, so what you're always thinking of with a key is that you're going to press it down, right? I've got a button, I'm going to press it down, and then I'm going to move it. So what I thought would be interesting to see, what else can I do with a key that would not be pressing down? So in this case, I've got an acoustic guitar where these keys, instead of pressing them down, I'm going to strum them just as if I would hit a string on a guitar and I activate it by vibrating the string, and this can then be used to generate sound. <laughs> So I thought it would be interesting to go again in another dire direction. So I was talking about keys. We always think about pressing down and then manipulate. I, I use the keys differently to actually hit the strings. Um, so let's do something else here now. And I'm going to actually use the keys as if they would be a surface. So I don't know if anyone knows what a hang drum is. It's like a metal. Uh, percussion instrument that makes very beautiful resonating percussion sounds. Right? I thought it would be interesting to actually not use the keys as individual keys, but to use them as groups that build a surface on which I do some percussion. So I can do... So I think that pretty clearly shows that really your imagination can go in any direction when you've got sensors that are so detailed that every interaction that you have with the controller, instrument, measuring device that you're interacting with, when these are being captured and being sent to the computer and are ready for you to actually build your sounds with. And so the third technology that is rising now, and that I think is coming together with the other two that I mentioned before, so amazingly power com powerful computers, uh, controllers with very detailed sensors, and now we're getting synthesis engines that are actually going further than what was possible before. So I've shown you some pretty convincing demos of uh, the Eigenharp emulating existing instruments, right? You had... Uh, a bass in the beginning, a piano, you had a cello, you had a hang drum, you had an acoustic guitar. But all that is really not that interesting in my opinion. It's great, it's a nice demo material, right? But it's nothing new. So these new synthesis engines are actually allowing you to use digital synthesis and not just sampling or physical modeling, digital synthesis to create your own sounds and to manipulate them with these kind of controllers. And so, interestingly, this is being driven by the iPad. Apple did something when they released the iPad, they put in the whole music and sound architecture of Mac OS X inside iOS. Some people say it was actually an accident, I don't know, but it has bled into a whole bunch of software synthesizers that have been created by quite famous synthesizer makers. And 
the unique capability of a multi-touch interface is that when you put down your finger, you can be individually expressive with each finger. So obviously, they had to adapt their synthesis engines so that they could generate sound independently for each note that you're playing, which is a stark contrast to the piano, where you just press down and you hit the hammer hits a string, right? However, the iPad and any other multi-touch uh, surface is really not that great as a sensor technology. It's great as an enabler, which allowed the software synthesizers to be built, but the sensor technology itself is not that great. It's, it's a little bit coarse-grained, and there are some timing issues at, at certain moments. So as a musician, you kind of feel disconnected still. To, 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 to finish this off now, um, I'm going to demo a software synthesizer that runs on the iPad, which is made by Moog, ironically. Moog is one of the very popular analog synthesizer makers. So they've actually been making synthesizers since the beginning, since I think the mini Moog became uh, popular in the 1970s. So they've been making analog synthesizers since then, and now they build their first digital synthesizer on the iPad, which is called Animoog. And it has that per note expression capability built in. So let me demo that for you. Thank you. And so with that, I think that in the next decade, we're going to see a whole bunch of new styles of music that are going to rise up from this new age that is being created for digital musicians right now. Thank you, and have a great conference. <laughs>